IFC is, I think, one of the broadest standard out there, and it's an international standard. It's an ISO standard, which describes a set of agreements of what objects exist, what to call those objects, what properties can be stored with those objects, and what relationships those objects can have with other objects. And I think most people have heard of IFC, and it's one of the broadest scope is the best way to describe it. Because I think what people don't realize is that there are actually many standards you can follow, but often their scope is limited to a certain discipline or use case. Whereas IFC is, is quite unique in that it covers a huge part of the industry. And for that, it's probably a good reason to be familiar with it. What somebody who doesn't know anything about this should know about this? What is relevant? Well, first thing is to realize who's working on it. It is building smart. So if you <laughs> want to know like the most official descriptions of IFC and where to find out more information, building smart is the best place to go to. You know, they are the guys who are creating the ISO standard. Uh, however, a word of warning that let's just say the documents provided by building smart can be a little bit technical and it can be difficult to understand if you don't have a background in uh, software development. So an alternative is to check out the OS Arch Wiki. And we've got a series of pages which are uh, still, still a bit of work in progress, but we've made a good start, uh, which will show you the beginnings of what IFC is. So the first one we're going to talk about today is an introduction to IFC, but I guess you can read ahead on that. And I'll keep this on, on the back of my screen so you can read as I talk. And this is what IFC is. It's a set of agreements that describes many different types of concepts. And one of the concepts are physical objects, like walls and slabs, but it also describes the geometry that can be associated with those objects. It describes the properties, the materials, but then it also describes things that are more specific to our industry. Because so far, objects and I guess geometry is something that there are already other agreements out there. You know, there are other standards that do this very well. But IFC also talks about concepts like construction planning. It talks about scheduling or costing and quantity takeoff. It also talks about legal liability. It lets you assign roles and responsibilities to BIM objects. It also lets you talk about design strategies and uh, uh, both legal and uh, informal constraints or objectives of the design. And that can be linked to the model as well. And it also has data which allows it to be used for structural analysis, energy analysis, lighting analysis. And as you can see here, we're, we're covering quite a lot of topics and there's many, many concepts in each one of those fields. And uh, at the moment, IFC is trying to describe, I guess, all of it, which is a huge mammoth task. And uh, it, well, it's a work in progress and we're getting there slowly as, as an industry. Uh, most of the people, they interact with IFC through an IFC file, and this leads to a few misconceptions. So they they, they see a, uh, a file that says, uh, which has a, a name like uh, mybuilding.ifc, and somebody sends them an IFC file. And when they look at that, they think that IFC is a file format. And this is one of the most common misconceptions with IFC. It's not a file format. IFC itself is simply a set of agreements of information which can be stored. However, there is an additional set of standards saying, by the way, if you want to describe these objects, these concepts in a text file, you can do that and you can call it .ifc. But that's not the only way. So for example, if I start a uh, new model here and I'll open up this, uh, just a test model. So if I go and export this file and I open it for the text editor, you can see that this is all IFC data stored in a text file and it looks a certain way. And we won't go into the details of how it looks, but it's got a lot of really technical looking stuff and it's got numbers and it's got, you know, uh, capital letters and stuff, but it's not the only way in which you can have IFC data. There's alternative ways. So for example, if I wanted to export, let's see if this will work. This, but instead of calling it test.ifc, I'm going to call it test.ifc JSON. And now if I open it, you can see that the file looks totally different. And this is all under the hood. This is all technical stuff. But at the very least, you can see that this does not look at all like the one on the right. Both yes. of these look totally different, but they all are both IFC. 
they both store data and the exact same data. The data on the left and the data on the right is exactly the same data. It's just formatted differently and one is better for certain technologies and another is better for other technologies. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that when people say, oh, IFC is a file format and, you know, maybe they think it's difficult to use or they think it's big or small or can only be opened by certain things or it doesn't work on the cloud. Those are misconceptions by people seeing it as a file format. But if you see it as a set of agreements, this data can be used as a huge file in a binary form, compressed, uncompressed on a server, on a cloud, on your desktop, on your phone, sending bits of data, sending entire models. It doesn't really matter. It's just a set of agreements. And how you use a set of agreements, whether you use it to describe just a couple things, like maybe a single material and nothing else, or you use it to describe an entire building. That's the freedom and flexibility provided to you as a user. So I've got a, a few formats that IFC can be stored as. So IFC is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an IFC zip, and this is simply a compressed file of, of the IFC. Uh, there's XML and JSON and HDF and uh, SQL, SQLite. Now, as a user, this should not really concern uh, most users because this is purely different ways for computers to talk to each other. And that's not really what users are concerned with. But it's important to understand that IFC is a bit more than a file. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's computers can talk directly to each other, talking the IFC language without ever touching one of these files, for example. If we break away from that mentality of our model must live in a single file and realize that IFC is actually is nothing about that, I think we can start seeing how a set of agreements about how to describe objects is so important to open BIM.